Ed DeRosa live in Louisville at HRN HQ. Pleased to be joined by Jeff Bessa of Charting Horse Value. Not live in Louisville, but live, I believe, in Texas. Is that correct? That, thank you for having me, Ed. Yes, McKinney, Texas. McKinney, Texas. All right, which is near what, Dallas? Uh, about half hour north of Dallas, about 45 okay. minutes from Lone Star. Very good. All right. Well, uh, we'll talk about Lone Star. They just closed, so it'll be a while before we probably mention them again. But we'll get to them eventually with you. But Gulfstream Park, the topic of conversation for this vidcast is they have a mandatory payout. Caught some people off guard, so we want to make sure we prepare people as best as possible. A Thursday mandatory payout as the fiscal year comes to a close in Florida, June 30th. 100000 plus already in the pot. Plenty more to go out after the money comes in. And as you and I briefly discussed before coming on air, Jeff, a tough sequence. As always in a pick six, you're going to have to earn it. Very. It's going to pay. Um <laughs> There's going to be one or two races that are very hard to predict. And this, I mean, pick six is not my favorite wager or even my, or my best. I have hit Gulfstream's pick six once. I hit it uh, on like a $12 ticket it went for 20 cents. And I think it paid 1500 bucks or something there like that. Go. Yeah. So one time I've hit it. I'm not great <laughs> at it, uh, but well, I will do my best to help people. I do think, uh, obviously, you know, part of the pick six is structuring and whatever your budget is and finding the right opinions. Uh, it's very easy to be right and still wrong in a pick six. But yes. the benefit, I think, of A, these videos from a macro level and then B, charting horse value at a micro level is, you know, you're you're not in the business, at least as far as the sheet goes, of giving out a pick six ticket. It's information. It's opinions race to race. And as we've seen uh, over the weekend with some people who thank you for some nice hits at various tracks, it's about finding the horse that otherwise maybe they wouldn't have landed on on their own. Or maybe you give them a little extra confidence to single when they were between two horses. That's how I use it anyway. And rather than go race to race, I took the approach of I'm going to look at this as if I'm playing the pick six and charting horse value is actually all I've looked at so far. So I have not been tainted by my own handicapping process, which involves using Brisnet PPs. I like looking at sheets as well. Uh, but my first thought is a pick six player scanning the sheet. I immediately was drawn most to race six because number one, Kingston Queen uh, had the shortest odds in terms of your, your probability columns. And seemed to, that seemed to be backed up with a spot play designation, a plus, and an A, what I would say an A on the grid, an A grade. To me, that all pointed to if there's going to be a single among these six races, that's probably going to be it. Would you say that's a fair interpretation of someone who's glancing through a sequence looking for a most likely winner? Well, there were two races that I immediately focused on where I thought I had a strong opinion. That's one of them, race six, which we can get into. And the other one's race four. Uh, similar situation with the spot play A plus uh, on the top. So those are the two that I kind of zeroed in on where I probably would need to take a stand. And both of them, by the way, are not favorites. Um, wow. Yeah. So How about you know, that? one's a second <laughs> choice and one's like a second longest choice. Um, so, okay. yeah, I, I oh, totally and agree. Shame yeah. on me. I usually do look at the morning line and, and I saw the green, which I knew meant value, but I didn't even think to <laughs> divert my eyes to the left to the morning line column. Uh, well, now I'm really eager to see what I come up with, because usually when I run always and these types are highly favored, uh, th they're the morning line just is wrong. I mean, it is probably the case. Would you say that? I mean, do you think six to one is feasible here or is that just probably a. Week well, line. I think that three is going to take quite a bit of money. The morning line does look uh, off. Okay. It's certainly flat. I mean, they have a yeah. three to one favorite and then the rest. Yeah, he doesn't. Right there. He's not trying very hard. Uh, <laughs> but the, uh, but yeah, I, I think I don't know what's going to happen. I think you're going to get a fair price on Kingston Queen. Um, I like that's it. For sure. Yeah. But I don't you know, you might only get nine to two, you know, but I still think 
there's a lot of contention in that race. Um, it's a good race to have an opinion. And it is uh, one of two all-weather races. Uh, five of the six are sprints. Four of those five are dirt sprints. This is the lone synthetic sprint, and then we end with the synthetic route. Uh, we'll get to that one in a bit. Uh, before we get to the, the two that start things off, which also have uh, A-plus grades uh, in races three and four, including a spot play, as you noted, in race four, I did want to ask about races five and seven, and this is anecdotal. You'll know much better. It's your sheet. I'm not as familiar. It, it seems like there usually is an A. Mm -hmm. And I was drawn to the fact that in both those races, let's see, race five, there's a B plus and then two Bs. Race yep. seven, it's three Bs and the plus is with a C. Yep. Does that mean they're wide open? Yes. Okay. So basically the letter grade is a shortcut. I, I'm going to do a video maybe this week. Um, because I think everyone kind of gets drawn to that letter grade, and it's certainly a nice shortcut right. uh, for everything that's being displayed. But basically, it's looking at the ranks. Um, it primarily looks at the rank column. You see those different ranks there from one to three. Uh, and then it looks at a few other factors, which I won't belabor here. But it's, you know, and basically what's, what's happening is those rank columns are very spread out and diversified across a large number of the field. Um, and that's why no horse gets an A. Uh, okay. Yeah. And those familiar with what I post on social media, the grid, I'm, I'm very comfortable with sort of the, the grading idea. Uh, yours makes perfect sense where you, I mean, now that you explain it, where it comes from. And then uh, I always thought an odds line is very helpful in that regard too. And to me, it really shows you know, a lot of times I'll land on a favorite and I'll look at your odds line or Colts Neck Data has an odds line as well, always provides one. And it's really striking to me how often that, yeah, we're all on the most likely winner, but the odds line is, let's say, three to two or two to one. And if the horse is going to be even money, that's a terrible bet. Yes. But totally. we're all inclined to want to use that most likely winner. And, and that's what makes this game so tough is you're consciously throwing out sometimes a horse you acknowledge can win 40% of the time. Yeah. Well, you know, favorites win 40% of the time, but not all of them do. Some win right. higher than that and some win lower than that. Um, and so, I mean, if you could find one of those 27% favorites, that's a great place to take a stand against it. Uh, and then if you can identify those 55% favorites, well, maybe you, you better be pretty careful there. Okay. Right. So, <laughs> You know, 38% is the average favorite. Uh, and um, so I think a lot of times you'll see the favorites kind of weak on my chart and there's no A's given out at all. That might be a place to just toss the favor completely. Yeah, be, you got to be willing to get beat sometimes, uh, long term especially. But that's part of, like you said, the pick six being so difficult. Um, you know, I think part of it's making those decisions of where you're willing to get beat and acknowledging that you can get beat sometimes. Uh, it all starts in race three. Uh, yeah. Does the, uh, yeah, maiden claiming. And this is the, we've mentioned races four and six. This is the third of the races where there is an A-plus grade, uh, some decent green shading as well. So maybe some value uh, with that horse. Uh, but Let's see, the, there's actually a seven to five morning line who did not get the top grade. So uh, seems like right off the rip, there might be an opportunity. Yeah. Now, this is a really I, I have looked at the PPs, so I've tainted myself. <laughs> but I will, I will tell you what, what you can see clearly here. First of all, the first thing that jumps out at me is this red jack who's 20 to one morning line shows up second on my chart. And. And that makes me very appeal. It's very appealing, okay? Because this horse, if you look at the PPs, this horse is dropping in class, but is uh, O for whatever, uh, has been never, I don't think it's been ever less than 30 to one, <laughs> and is very slow in this energy column, okay, of 74, okay? Uh, everybody, you know, the three favorites in the race are 84, 85, and 88. I don't think Red Jack has a shot at all. So, you know, he didn't get the plus horse. There's some positives there. Um, you know, this minus zero trainer is obviously not good. But then an eight jockey gets on board. That's intriguing. 
um, you know, eight relative to the jockey colony that we're looking at. And um, so, I mean, there's some positives there, but I'm not using that horse at all. Um, Katraka was another one. Now, that horse is 10 to 1, first time starter. 10 to 1 looks pretty fair. If you look over the odds column, he's 11 to 1, 9 to 1. But when I was looking at the PPs, that trainer does pretty darn well with first time starters. Mm -hmm. um, Katraka, he's a 7% trainer. He's 15% with maiden claiming and 11% uh with first time starters and david baraka is a five percent jockey but when they get together they win 13 14 percent of the time so this is a long shot but this horse is an overlay uh i think this horse is an overlay at 10 to 1. um so you know that's you know something to look at but i think ultimately it's going to come down to these three favorites uh the one the seven and the six and uh the seven's coming off a very long layoff um and very interesting, you look at the PPs on this one, voided claim, avoided claim. I've never seen that before. A little V. Uh, yeah. Um, it's the first time I've seen that. So immediately after that race, the horse takes a lengthy six-month layoff. <laughs> um, and now is, you know, first time Lasix racing as a three-year-old. Um, you know, that's an interesting horse. The six horse is the favorite. I don't like that horse at all. Um Second lifetime start, horse was off slow two months ago, and then very light works for this, coming back to chalk. Yeah, so, I mean, I'm going to be on that one. Top horse on my chart. Hope I get three to one. Yeah. Uh, third off the layoff. It was a short layoff, but third off the layoff is the speed of the race. Look, no other horse in the race has any speed. 98 early speed. Nothing else is remotely close. Uh, good jockey trainer combination. Uh, gets the A plus. I would probably single that horse to start the sequence off, and that way, if I'm if I lose, I move on to pick five. You know, it's no loss. Yeah, pick five is a great wager at Gulfstream. They pay you on four out of five. Um, you know, there's no jackpot takeout. So I think that's a very good single. This is a weak field, and uh, that favorite's weak. I would just single the one and and hope hope to survive. Now, would you uh, make any sort of uh, calibration if Katraka opens up at seven to two, live in the doubles? Would that make you more inclined to figure something out? If Katraka drifts up to 25 to one, definitely a toss. Yeah, if that horse gets played and is very live early, especially look at the early money coming in on that horse. Right. Or like you, you know, that's where I would be looking. Uh, you see that horse. So, like the other day, I saw a horse who was like 21 morning line opened up at three to one <laughs> and then drifted all the way back up to 10 to one. And then he won easily. So you can look for that early mm -hmm. money angle on horses like that. That's where the smart money will be. The, the barn money will be in the early money. So try to watch for that first, uh, first tick of the odds and see what it tells you uh, on Kachaka. So this is a race you can at least take advantage of that early money. Right. Um, same thing with Red Jack. If Red Jack opened up, you know, really short price, uh, I would take a hard look at it. I don't think that's going to happen, but, um, but uh, barring anything weird like that, I'm probably going to put my rest of my laurels on that one. And I like the seven more than the six. So if I did go too deep, I would use the seven and toss the favorite. All right. Uh, yeah, well, that, that's a good start against the favorite. In the opening leg, um, we mentioned race four along with race six might be one of the ones you single, or maybe you're thinking both. Um, is it Ellie, Ellie Rees Easton? I feel like Ellie, I'm missing some reference there, but. Ellie R E R C Easton. Ellie no Reese Easton. Oh, I bet that's it. Oh. Ellie Reese Easton. Maybe. Yeah. Whatever that means. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, another generous price on, on the line for a, a horse who looks to stick out a little bit on your, your report. I like that horse. Now, this race is going to be very interesting from a pace dynamic. There's two speed horses in here, the one and the four. They got an F6 and an F9. And as you know, speed is good, okay, uh, sprinting mm -hmm. on the dirt. But both those horses have are coming off some bad races. And they will be running with each other. 
And if you if you look at the PFDS odds and the best odds, typically those are going to be comparable to each other. But look how both of them decline. 3.7 to 12 to 1, 4.8 to 14 to 1. Again, indicating not the best form. So I think the speed will fade. And then you got these two closers on top, um, which one of them should get it done, the two or the three. The two, I mean, got it done last race, or I think took second last race. Um, and that one's two for 20 lifetime. So I'm again, I, you know, you could go single, single and then start spreading another legs, but I really like the three here. Um, but hopefully that pace falls apart. The other horse that's interesting is the five and you see the horse does get a C grade and the five is by the same trainer, I think is a three. Let me just double check that. Yeah, that's uh, right. Uh, Antonio Sano. Now, when you look at the trainer score, Ellie Easton, Ellie Reeston or whatever is an eight, and Ever Three is a six. So the same trainer gets a lower score on Ever Three. And actually, Ever Three didn't run the greatest race in his last one. But the thing that Ever Three has as a slight advantage is we'll probably get the jump on the three, get the jump on the two, maybe holds on. But the three and the two are going to come closing, and I think the three would win. Um, so you could single the three, or you could maybe go three deep with the two, three, five. Um, but I think it's a good place to play against those two speed horses, who I'm a little worried about. Right. All right. Yeah, and uh, another sort of flat morning line. No uh, big price there like we had in the opening leg with Grand Player, who's seven to five. Um Race yeah, five. Way, a lot of these flat morning lines. Yeah. No, I don't know why. But uh, race five, uh, one of those along with race seven I mentioned that just uh, seems ex extremely competitive. Yes. Um, you know, which made in special weight race. Uh, no real standout in my mind. I agree. And you've got a three first-time starters. Uh, and if you look over in the value column, the highest value is six. It's pretty low. So that's why this race gets a zero over in the DS column. You see uh, an asterisk, zero asterisk. Yeah. This, this is a very difficult race. Um, probably a place you want to spread. You know, you, this is a place you could spread. You, I think Tenacious Val could win the four. Um, I even think that Sadie's Amendment, the seven, is a sneaky horse um, for a first-time starter. The um, the one is coming off this long layoff, but gets a nice jockey upgrade. Good trainer, uh, good getting blinkers on. That horse could win. The favorite could win. Um, yeah. And I'll I'll say on Sadie's amendment, I'm I'm eager to to dig in myself at some of the things I look at, but uh, Constitution. 19% with his debut runners and the dam, all four of her starters are winners and two of those four won at two, um, which these are three-year-olds, but I still, when I see two-year-old winners, it just kind of, to me, still indicates some ability to throw brilliance. Um, you know, so for first time out, even at three, that kind of catches my eye. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, th this one, I mean, just even paper handicapping the pedigree at 15 to one, um, you know, it's one of those situations you'd love to be live to her and then the board opens up and she's seven to two and you're already locked in on a nice pick six. That's, that's a good feeling. I was looking at the, so the trainer is Joseph Catanese. He's like an eight, 9% trainer. Um, however, he's debut made his special weight. He's 13%. And with Luca Panici, who's like a 7% jockey, they win 18, 19% together. Pretty good sample size. Yeah. And all their all this guy's angles are profitable. I mean, so yeah, he's gonna go off at good odds, but he wins. When he wins, he wins with long shots. So I mean, I think seven makes sense. Um, and honestly, you can make a case for all of them. The eight, by the way, probably gonna get the lead. Um, or you know, there's a good chance of it anyway, and it could go wire to wire. Of course, that's the favorite, it's not very exciting. Mm -hmm. But the point is, it's very wide open. And if you're playing a pick six, you probably need to go pretty deep here. Um, 
And you could do that if you went single, single, the first two legs. Right. And then you could just say, I'm going to go all there. I'm not even going to handicap that race. It's, uh, but I think certainly the, there's two debut runners at 15 to one. Um, it, it could be one of those races that blows up. Uh, we mentioned Kingston queen already. Uh, she, now that I am bringing up the PPs just to keep up with when we talk about running lines or whatnot, she is, uh, the prime power pick as well. Um, so I'm, I'm definitely thinking, okay, six to one, probably unlikely, but you know, <laughs> People do still look at the morning lines when they put their tickets together. I'm not saying she'll play six to one in the, the pick six either, but probably is going to be an overlay being that she is the sixth choice of seven on the morning line. And, uh, you know, based on what little I've seen so far is easily among the most likely winners of this race. There are a couple of pretty, first of all, look at that value 32. I mean, you pointed this out already, but, there's $32 of value in this horse. That's probably the highest of the day. <laughs> so to make a case, this is the best bet of the day. Um, and now when I play a pick six, I like to have a couple singles. Uh, this would be a third single potentially. Right. So you could play multiple tickets where maybe you try to get two of those three singles home. It's hard to get three singles home, but maybe you get two out of the three home. And uh, uh, so you play kind of a multiple ticket strategy. Uh, the, some of the lightly raced horses that looked interesting to me was R. Reposado Loca. Um, that horse has uh, really good speed, stepping up in class, but that's not a bad, that's not a bad thing. And then I thought that there is the potential for some speed here. You got two F nines and a T eight. Um, those top three horses, and if that happens, it might set up for Boss Lady Kim. Um, so, you know, you on one ticket, you might single Kingston Queen, and maybe another ticket, you use the three and the six. Um, so that's a way I would look at th this race. I think I'd be okay with just the uh, one, three, and six in this race. Nothing else really, you know, impressed me. Sure. Uh, race seven, uh, another one of those, similar to race five, and uh, this one is uh, back on the main track. Three Bs, two Cs. One of them does have uh, the plus, also uh, a 12 in the value column for number three, Shocho. Uh, it was 12 to one on the morning line. Uh, this one, to me, even more than race five, Jeff, was exciting because it it felt like, whereas race five, I, I'm kind of with you. It's like, well, any of them can win. Three first-time starters. You know, even the eight on the outside is the favorite probably wouldn't want that if you're going all, but definitely dangerous race seven. And even a quick look now at actual of the PPs, it does seem like, man, there's horses who are going to be five to 10 to one in that range who are absolutely contenders here. And I'd be even willing to, to toss the five to two morning line favorite. I'm on the same page with you. Um, I really like that Scocho, however you pronounce it. <laughs> um, Somehow that horse is the longest odds in the race and uh horse horse makes sense. Um, did is coming maybe out of a bad race. Let me look at that. Um, this is race seven. Scocho. No, no coming out two wins. So yeah. Um, good speed stepping up. That was what my comment was. So the horse is uh, being dismissed off the step up in class. But I think the horse makes sense. Uh, I love that horse at 12 to 1. Spear Gun was another. Gets $8 of value. The problem with Spear Gun, if you look at the PPs, is this 0.7 in the PFDS column. You notice that's the lowest in the race. Horse might need longer. Okay? He's been kind of, you know. Mm. Um, but great trainer. Look at that 12 in the trainer. That means the angles for this horse are superb. Okay, so I mean that's a horse that's usable. I agree. Smiling Tuffles does not interest me, um, and the other one I've liked a little bit. Uh, let's see here, race seven, three, two, five. The two, rough entry. Okay, this horse is dropping to the lowest companies ever faced before. Uh, this horse just ran the big drama stakes. Is running the Sir Shackleton. Ran in a Grade Three. I mean, he got crushed in all of them. But this horse has never seen a field this week before. 
Uh, 25,000 starter. This horse qualifies on a race a year ago. Um, this horse might be just more talented than what he's facing. So you're getting a pretty nice drop in class here. Um, by the way, this jockey and trainer do great together. Good trainer. He uses Morales. Morales wins with them. Uh, I would use this two for sure. I like it two, three, and maybe five. I don't think you need to go that deep. All right. Uh, before we get to the last, which is the lone uh, dirt or lone route race of the sequence, it's on synthetic. Um, there's a synthetic sprint as well. I did want to put a sort of a bow around the main track sprints, which is what you see here. Uh, this is dirt specifically. Uh, and I went back to May 9th, uh, which, uh, you know, I just kind of thought, well, right after Derby Day, there's definitely kind of a shift in, in racing. And uh, I found, you know, looking at our track trends tool, pretty fair. And this is certainly germane to some of the things we've already talked about, where there are some races where it looks like there could be some speed to set things up. And uh, as we can see, closers, 29%. So, yeah, a little less than the other two styles, but certainly higher than a lot of other tracks, dirt sprints, which is, you know, sometimes 10, 20% only. Uh, early speed, not a huge advantage. Stalker actually has a higher percentage over the last, uh, what is this, seven weeks, I guess. And then uh, post-wise, I thought was really interesting that inside speed does well. Horses on the lead from the outside, maybe too much to do, end up wide. I don't really know the reason for that, but it definitely does seem like the further back you are, the more ground you want to save, which is kind of one of those things that sounds obvious when you say it out loud, but the numbers uh, certainly bear that out. So uh, I think it's, it's uh, you know, as we talked about several of these races where there does appear to be an opportunity for some pace, uh, that closers certainly are able to uh, close into it based on those numbers at Gulfstream. So that is Dirt Sprints, and we do close things out with a synthetic route and uh, optional claimer 35,000. So pretty classy group for uh, summer racing at Gulfstream. There is an A in here, but uh, I, I don't think uh, it just didn't appear to me, Jeff, to be as strong as some of the others we talked about. Uh, and it, it is lower on the uh, the rankings as well than those. Uh, maybe another one based on having two or three singles into this where you can be live to a bunch to close it out. Yeah, that three is coming out of a bad race. Um, and uh, that's probably why it's dropping down. Mm. Uh, the, let me pull my sheet up here. Uh, yeah, declines. Look at that. 4.1 to 11 to 1. Uh, definitely coming out of a bad race. He's the only F in the race, but his early speed's not that great, and we just saw that speed's not that great right now. Uh, so I don't like that horse. Um, but you can make a you can make a good case for a lot of horses in here. The four fits perfectly. Um, KC Chief, and um, by the way, this is another. Yeah, he's not an A, but fits perfectly. Um, the uh, oh, the four also is not is not in for attack. So this is uh, a little confusing. It says claiming race over there in my column, but uh, if you, I think if yeah, you, there, there's some yeah, allowance conditions. There's some conditions, yeah. So I kind of like that. No tag, really nice jockey trainer combination. Is dropping has a. By the way, the only horse in the race with multiple wins. So this horse has two wins. Mm -hmm. uh, I like that one a lot. I don't like the three, as I said before. I and, don't. Uh, the, the jockey of the four also rode the three the last three times out. Um, and my my trainer jockey stats say Aramio's only ridden for this trainer once in the last 60 days, uh, which it wouldn't have been this horse because his layoff's longer than that. But it's not like he has some deep-rooted relationship with this trainer if he's only ridden for him once but he ends up on KC Chief instead of Valiant Avenger. Yeah, he's been riding both horses. He's been on this horse four times. And here's the stats I got from Brisnet. Now, I don't know what time frame they use, but he's won three out of six races at the meet. And he's five out of seven lifetime with this trainer, Jaramillo. So he doesn't get on often, but he wins a lot. He does. Yeah, so I think KC Chief makes complete sense. Um, 
who else did I like? Uh, I thought the seven, which is high in my chart. I mean, gets a C plus. If I'm if I'm playing strictly off the chart, I'm using that horse. Okay, twelve to one, eight dollars of value. Maybe he's an overlay. The PPs scare you away. I'll tell you that. If you look at PPs, you're like, no way. That's but how you get a price. That's how you get a price. There's something hidden in that data that my chart likes, but you're not going to see it on the PPs. Um, the six, uh, Ghost and You. Let me let me look at that one again. That one. Uh, Oh yeah, lightly raced, uh, dropping down to thirty-five thousand. Um, that you know that looks pre like pretty nice horse. Now Alvarado, I just sort of got suspended. Um, I don't know if he's running or not, but mm. Alvarado and Safi Junior are incredible together. Uh, Thirty percent lifetime, and that's a fourteen percent jockey. So, right. Uh, I think six is very interesting. You could use the nine as well. I'd probably be pretty satisfied with four, six, nine, uh, tossing the three, tossing the seven, tossing the eight. All right. But tough sequence. And, yeah. you know, people got to look at the tools that are available to them, look at the data themselves. Um, you know, but that's how kind and of. A I always, uh, I mean, this is, this is a leak of mine. So it's, you know, kind of personal, but I mean, you, you have to allow yourself at least some opportunity to adjust for scratches. Um, yes. I mean, we all get, you know, you do the work and you, you feel like this is your ticket and a lot of time, oh, this horse scratched and, you know, maybe you don't even replace it, which is fine. Um, but sometimes the dynamics of a race can change based on scratches. And I, I really encourage everyone not to just set it and forget it when it comes to these type of pick six wagers, because, um, you know, speaking from experience, uh, a race is one, let's say, gate to wire that you maybe, you know, thought, man, how did that happen? And you go, oh, this horse scratched and you just kind of didn't allow for it. Um, it's probably the most obvious example, but definitely uh, Thursday morning, get the scratches and, and come up with the, the final game plan from there. But yes. uh, as we said at the top, Jeff, uh, it's hard to hard to see this one not not rewarding you for your time and efforts. Yeah, we gave out some really, you know, interesting singles that are not favorites. Uh, so, you know, that will help you. If you hit those, you got great value. Right. And then you spread pretty deep in a couple of those legs that look pretty hard. Um, but you're gonna have to you're gonna have to be right on a couple couple. I saw a guy on Twitter um hit like some thirty six thousand dollar ticket, and I think he went all in three legs. <laughs> you know, but you know what he was right in the other three legs. I think he had, yeah, he had a couple singles. He had one, maybe two, three deep, and then like three alls. And he got he caught bombs. You know, he got bombs in the other three legs. Yep. Uh, you probably can't handicap your way to that. <laughs> so you know, there's a lot of different ways to play these tickets depending on your budget. Right. Yeah. It's, I mean, I, I've read, and it's kind of hard to disagree with people who say, "Well, look, if you're, you know, really want to give yourself a shot at a." Fifty hundred thousand dollar score, you. I mean, you literally need to use horses you don't think can win, right? Uh, you know that those are the ones that make it pay that when they do. Um, and I'm not. I'm not entirely sure. I mean, there's no huge fields in this. There, are, I think seven to eight. So, um, you know, a, a, a huge separation at that point may be unlikely in this sequence. But like yeah. you said. You hit for fifteen hundred on on a twelve dollar ticket, which is sixty combos, um, but with the right singles and you know being willing to take a few stands against a favorite, uh, that that can work out. So uh, that's Thursday at Golfstream Race Three, and if you get uh, the Charting Horse Value product, you've seen many of the races already. Six of the eight at Golfstream on Thursday, but the great thing about CHV is every track running Thursday will be in the, uh, the the product for that day. And, of course, if you're a monthly subscriber, you already get that for every day. But uh, lots of action Thursday. There is a Belmont Park Pick 6 carryover, which my colleague uh, Sarah Albadwi is going to discuss with David Levitch. So we got carryovers all up and down I-95 on Thursday. And uh, both uh, should at least, I would think, 
Gulfstream probably 750 pool and Belmont around 500,000. So big money. And Jeff, hopefully we've done our part to help people down in South Florida. Yeah, it's fun. Thanks for inviting me. Enjoyed doing this with you. And if anyone has any questions, by the way, feel free to DM me on Twitter uh, at info charting ho one. You, you can find me. Just search for charting horse value. Feel free to DM me. I'm happy to answer any questions. And yeah, definitely subscribe at uh, Horse Racing Nation. Yep, we want you on board, and uh, hopefully, we want to see some winning tickets on Thursday. And hopefully, we helped. And uh, if we did, maybe we'll have some winning tickets of our own, Jeff. Yes, exactly. <laughs> All right, Jeff. Appreciate your time. I'm Ed DeRosa for Horse Racing Nation. Be sure to like, subscribe, check out our other videos. Lots of good sequences this week. Pick six is on Thursday. Good stuff all weekend with stakes action at Churchill and Belmont. Best of luck.